Hey guys, welcome to Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. I'm Bones. And I'm Fofo. All right, thank you so much to everybody that has been following the podcast continuously and we still get your emails. If you guys want to, you know, give us a little message, you can email us at behindrelationshipgoals at gmail.com. But moving on to the topic of the podcast. Yeah, b- before moving on, actually, I wonder if we were able to post our new OBB. I think we have. So I, yeah. if you guys saw OBB version 2, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I guess just a quick backstory on how that came up. Okay. Um, I think Megan and I were talking about RPG and I remember the Mario and Luigi RPG on the Game Boy Advance okay. and that speci- there was a specific scene which I remembered there and then I remembered uh, Legend of Zelda and I mishmashed those two in my head and we came up with this new OBB and I hope you guys enjoy it we have so many more ideas for OBBs moving forward because we don't think this podcast is going to end anytime soon who said it was going to end anytime soon? It isn't going to end. So we're going to have so many more ideas. You forgot a little point about the OBB. Oh, what it's is It's also that? inspired by Stardew Valley. Oh, yeah, it is. It the is. The forest. The forest vibe. And of course, big shout out to our collaborators for that OBB. That's Pixel Benny and Mikoy Morales, my friend. Yeah, so Pixel Benny was the one that made the animation and then Mikoy made the little soundtrack over the OBB. Yeah, so these are guys. These are our small little touches on the podcast that make it ours and allow us to enjoy ourselves as well with the content that we mm-hmm. create and we hope that you guys are enjoying it as well. All right, so moving forward, uh, we are now at... We're now in September. Sorry, I punched you. We're now in September and a lot has changed. I had to stop there because I was like, wow, I just realized that so much has changed in the past, what, six months? Has it been six months? Yeah, it has been um, March. So six months, yeah. So we went from living lives like as normally as possible, going about our day to being in lockdown and now we have been at home constantly if you have to go out to work we always wish that you're safe when you go outside of your house but most of us have been stuck at home for the past six months and what has changed from how we used to go about things before? We have a new normal. And some people mm-hmm. may say that gas gas na yung salitang yon, we're so over that word. But the thing is, it's such an easy description of ev- what everyone is going through. Yeah. Bonizi and I, over the past six months worth of podcasts, you saw our transition. And for this episode, we wanted to kind of enumerate what is life like for us in this new yes. normal. On an hour-to-hour basis. So we've come up with our new routines. We've looked for new work, to be honest with you. We've yeah. had to, uh, we are unable to do other kinds of work that we're used to doing. So how has that changed us? Because me, I'm always so curious. Like, let's say, uh, what do other, what does an engineer do nowadays? He yeah. used to go to job sites. Like, what do they do when they wake up in the morning? Do they lay in bed for four hours? And then do they eat? Do, what do they eat? When do they eat? Any habits? So yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm always so curious. Like, what has my, what have my brothers been doing? What have my cousins been doing? They're all in different Um, Industries. Industries, different fields of work. Because of that curiosity, I told Bones, you know, why don't we share it to our viewers? Maybe some of them might find it entertaining, amusing. Some of them might be curious about it. So we're here to share you exactly what happens during a day. So we'll do a before and after based on the time. Okay, let's start at 7 a.m. Now, 7 a.m. before quarantine we would usually be at taping by this time. Yeah. Because like, our usual call time is either 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. on the set. And usually we're already in hair and makeup and we're already doing our thing, having breakfast on the set if we have a taping day. Yeah. But now during the new normal, 7 a.m. is our ideal time to wake up. So we don't have to wake up three hours early anymore. So we don't have to wake up at 4 a.m. or 4.30 or 5 a.m. We wake up at 7 a.m. nowadays. And honestly, that happens maybe like two out of seven times a week. I was going to say, I'll be honest. I mean, 7 a.m. is the expectation, but the reality is we wake up at 9 o'clock, Fofo. Yeah. 10 a.m. late. Late na yung 10. Late na yung 10. That's if we sleep super late. Yeah. Okay. So Which does happen. So we're talking about our ideal day here. Okay. So at 7 a.m. we wake up and the very, very first thing that we do is we make ourselves a cup of coffee. 
Oh, you know what I do as soon as oh, I wake up? Oh, what do you up? do? I check my messages. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, you're right. Okay, I'm sorry. Before I even get out of bed, the very first thing I do is I have, um, I have two cell phones by my bedside. So my regular phone and the gaming phone. I check my gaming phone first because my gaming phone is left on the whole night. Yes, naka grind po siya sa yeah. game niya. So Anong na, game to? It depends. Sometimes it's Metal Slug, sometimes it's Ragnarok, sometimes it's Endless Frontier. Gamit na gamit at sulit na sulit ang screen <laughs> ng gaming phone ko. So pag si I don't think Bumino that screen phone, has turned off in the past six months. You probably haven't even <laughs> turned that phone off ever. Yeah, so. Um, that's the very first thing that I do. And in addition to that, nowadays, I check out the results of the NBA playoffs because mm. the first game starts at around 3 a.m. nowadays. So, yeah. Yeah, for me, I check my messages because sometimes we get messages at night, especially if we sleep early, na hindi namin nakikita the night before. So I make sure to check that before I go to opening my game. And I usually open up Fallout Shelter first. Oh, I didn't yeah. know you do that. Yeah, as soon as I open it up, I'll like lay in bed for like, do like my dailies for a bit. And then I'll get up and greet everybody a good morning and sit down for breakfast. So, araw-araw nag fall out shelter ka, pero ang baba ng power mo? Wag ka nga before hindi ako masipag, okay? Binabara mo na naman ako. Because when I wake up, Bonizi is usually turned away from me and I turn away from her because <laughs> her phones are on opposite sides. I didn't know she accesses her Fallout Shelter game every morning, pero ang baba ng power niya. Because there were like two weeks that I didn't really care about it, so. Okay. After our... Uh, wake up calls with our phones. After mo ako barahin, dahil sa morning routine ko. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> at 9 a.m. before the quarantine, if we're at taping, then we're usually taping by this time. Yeah, we're okay. still in taping. Or so, we're still in taping. Like, taping for us is usually just And if it's a non-taping day, we're still asleep. We would wake up. I would usually wake up at like 2, 3, 4 p.m. Especially if we come from taping the day before. Like, yeah. we'll finish at around 5 a.m. and then we'll sleep till whatever time that we wake up. But now... But now, this is what happens. So after we have breakfast at 9 a.m., we have a cup of coffee. Then we move over to the office area or just like the other room in the house, honestly, that we call the office. I'm curious, Bones. How long does it take you to go through breakfast? And the reason why I ask is some people enjoy breakfast. Mm -hmm. some, some take it as a time to slowly get into their day. Other people, they don't like breakfast. And others, they just kind of uh, vacuum breakfast and just like <laughs> go through it in a snap. Yeah. So what kind of breakfast person are you? I am the slow breakfast person because I have games for breakfast. Like I said, I open my games as soon as I wake up. And I like doing all my dailies before I actually do the work that I have to do. Because if not, I'm going to forget it. And I will lahat na mga points na pwede kong gawin for the game. Yeah, uh, I'm also a slow breakfast person. I don't like gobbling up my food. So I take my time, I sit down. Takes me around maybe half an hour to go through my breakfast food. And then after that, I get some coffee. Honestly, I have like two to three cups of coffee sometimes. Oh, and okay, I just have to say this. It's a bit TMI, but like the morning is like banyo time. So, gotcha. So you gotta it's like... It's your time on the throne. Yeah. So like in between like us like talking and like lovey-dovey at breakfast. Yeah, like, oh, great day. Wait lang, I gotta use the banyo. Okay. Tama, tama. Our body clocks have gotten used to that timing. Yes. Lol, well, sorry guys. <laughs> okay. People can relate. People can yeah, relate to that. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So after breakfast or during breakfast, I'm also looking at the news um, and my daily website. So there are websites that I go to. So a lot of news websites, a lot of tech websites, and some NBA websites. Bonizi knows about these NBA websites because she has to listen all the NBA analysts talk while oh, yeah. I'm eating my breakfast. Yeah. Give me uh, an example here. You know why these players don't, whatever, don't like <laughs> being in the bubble? <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Is LeBron James any good? Let me tell you something about LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try to insert a snippet of Stephen A. Smith. I don't own you, but I own it. <laughs> 
Bonizi knows his accent so well already. It's, it's so just, funny. And it's just the way that he talks. Uh, it's like part of my morning routine also. It's just like kind of like <laughs> eavesdropping on like the information or the news channels that Fofo listens to. I'm just like, I am so like, it's just like at the back of my head all the time. And whenever I copy it, he's like, oh my God, you actually listen to it? I'm like, how can I not <laughs> listen to it? Your speakers are on like maximum volume. Pogi points in para sa akin. Kasi yun talaga yung I'm like, ooh, kinikilig ako for Bonizi. May, Kasi, may, di ba, natutuwa siya sa isang bagay na that's really mine. It's yeah, my thing. Yeah, the yeah. basketball is my thing. It doesn't really interest you, but part of it does. Yeah. You find so you find it entertaining at least. So I'm like, ooh, she likes what I like. My last taco for you. Okay, go. <laughs> oh, it's Kendrick Perkins? Huh? <laughs> See, kawaii. Oh, si Kawai, si Kawai. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But anyway, that's where breakfast ends. So just a, maybe like an hour and a half. A long break, a super long breakfast is like two hours. And maybe that happens when we're wasted the previous day or we're yeah. super tired. Uh, that, does, that doesn't happen very often anymore. So mm-hmm. maybe within an hour, an hour and a half after breakfast, we head to the office. Yes, yeah, so that's around, around 10 a.m., I would say. I would say we start the office around 10.30. Like 10 a.m. is an early office time for us. Yeah, yeah. 10.30, we're usually, we're now, like our new normal is that we're at the office and we go through um, all the messages that we have or all the to-do lists that we have to do for the day. Before, usually at this time, if we felt like it in the morning, before quarantine, sometimes we'd go to the gym early in the morning if we felt like it. And then other times... You know, we'd be doing errands around the city. We'd be going out, going to the bank, um, probably going out to get coffee instead of having coffee at home and doing things from the coffee shop. For me, what interests me more is what we do nowadays. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think they're all. I think uh, some of our listeners and viewers might be wondering. Bakit may office work sila? Yeah. Hindi ba aktor at aktres sila? So before. Anong ginagawa nila na may office time or ano ba to, play time ba to? so what do we do or what do you do during office time okay so since the quarantine happened of course our jobs have really shifted and we can't go outside so a lot of our focus went into producing our online content one of that would be the podcast which you guys lovingly listen to we love you guys so much the next one would be the vlog and of course we have our facebook stream our facebook and instagram posts that we also need to work on so the office work would technically be working talking about inquiries yeah. that we have for our online postings, talking about scheduling with the management team, making sure that we get the receivables on time, and listing everything down. Because for the type of job that we have, it's important to have backlog or it's important to list down backlog no it's not it's backlog. important to have backlog we, no. i don't want sorry, backlog sorry. oh my god bones it's important not to have backlog oh so that, okay sorry sorry <laughs> like, oh my god yeah 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 sorry oh, sorry no it's important not to have backlog so we have to make sure that once something happens we list it down if we have an inquiry we list it down para hindi natatabunan sorry for for lang kamali pwedeng magkamali tumalon lang yung puso ko i was like oh my god Si Bones gusto pala niya ng backlog. <laughs> I Ako, that. I go into the office work and I'm trying to, you know, clean out our backlog. Siya pala nag-iipon pala ng backlog to. Hindi nga nagkamali. Okay, okay. I, I get it. I get it. Okay. So, if I were to summarize Bonizi's uh what Bonizi was trying to say and my own experience, office work for me comprises itself of answering emails and inquiries, uh, answering texts, uh, paying for all your bills, yes. scheduling meetings and shoots Attending for the following meetings. week and for the following days, and uh, writing down things to do for future concepts and projects that you would like to enact. Because yeah. when you think about it, shooting a podcast, shooting a vlog, uh, doing the stream, the gaming stream of Bonizi, and doing Quiz Moho. Even doing Kumu. postings, like postings for IG, IG stories. Yeah, so you put all those things together in one list and you automatically have eight things to do. Yeah. And you could dedicate half a day for each of those things. Mm-mm, so mm-mm. if you don't schedule that, magkakaroon ka ng backlog. Which we don't want. 
which we don't want. So <laughs> yeah, if you actually list that, I, I realize just listing it in my head, I realize how much work that is. And that doesn't include the extra brand work that we might receive. Mm-hmm. That doesn't include some of the extra things that might happen. Let's say, nasira yung air condito, we need to have it repaired. Let's say we need to schedule a dental appointment, we have to go there. Yeah. So this is just our essential work that we're listing down. And all of a sudden, you're like, Oh my God, and dami pala natin ginagawa. Yeah, and it was so hard for us in the beginning because, you know, we nowadays, diba, there are so many apps for messaging. So you, some groups will be on Viber, other groups will be on Telegram, some will be in Messenger. And parang nakakalito in the beginning, we're just like, ah, how do we organize everything? It's so hard to organize all the things that we need to do in one place. Okay, so in a nutshell, these are the messaging apps that we are using. So we have Viber. We have WhatsApp. We have Messenger. Telegram. We use Instagram. We use Telegram. Rarely use Twitter. And we also have Discord. So yes. how many is that? Five, six, seven? Super dame. And you have to check all of these all the time simply because you might miss out on a message. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, I mean, that's a lot of messaging apps. And I think people understand this now. I think there is something called, I'm I'm making up this term, messaging app fatigue. And I see it all the time. Sometimes when you talk to your friends, pagod na pagod na ako, bro. Ang daming groups sa Viber, sa WhatsApp. <laughs> Kasi syempre, hindi mo rin may iwasan yung social groups yeah. mo, yung family groups mo. It's tiring. And sometimes you need to just turn it off. And then you add to that your email. Yeah, my email pa. And I understand now, Bones, how when you watch the day in the life of a CEO and they're like, they have to dedicate like, two to three hours of the day email. just answering emails. And kailangan may technique sila on how they go through emails. Yeah. Kasi tayo, wala naman tayong kumpanya. Yeah. We work directly with our managers and our contacts and our brands. But even tayo, we're already feeling the weight yes. of all the yes. messages that we have to reply. Paano pa kaya isang CEO na my multiple departments, my multiple B2B business partners, mm-hmm. So I can imagine how, oh, I understand you now to all the executives out there. I guess to all of the people who work in corporate settings, I imagine and dami yung emails na minsan, baka hindi nyo na pinapansin kasi I'm like, oh, I can't do this. I can't focus yeah, on yeah. this. You have to pick your spots of where to focus. So we're learning this nowadays in our new normal and we're getting better at it. Of course, you have all these messaging apps and one thing that we were really concerned about was being organized. And even though we do have a management team, we have a manager and, you know, there are people the in handlers. different, the handlers, accounting and all that. It's also important for us to be hands-on because one thing that I wasn't before, I wasn't hands-on with all these things. Inaasa ko lang sa ibang tao and in the end, I become clueless of what's happening around me. So what Mikael said... FYI, she didn't know she had to pay for her credit bills, credit card bills yes, every month. this has been said multiple times Sorry, already. I it's already just such know a nice that. story. <laughs> so anyways, um, it's also important to be hands-on with these things. So we decided to make a plan and really list down everything that we need, everything once it's done, tatanggalin na namin. So we made a system for ourselves na lahat ilalagay na lang natin sa isang messaging app. That's true. So what was our messaging app of choice? Our messaging app of choice was... Discord. So Discord is a gaming app primarily. It's made for gamers. But the way it's set up just gives us features and resources that help us manage our life better. And it makes it so much more organized. This is not an ad, by the way. This is something that we really use and we really love. And at first, I was like, why are we going to use Discord for like managing our work? But it has been so useful for us. It's helped us organize for like Ragnarok and Wowi and you know all these things why not use it for work. our real life work and it's very very useful to us I like this okay Bont you know let's stick to this a little bit because I think a lot of people um, are going through this as well we've heard this so many times that it's hard to manage the messages it's hard to respond some people sa totoo lang, uh, if they're freelancers they don't have time to think about these yeah. these things. So what are other tips that you can give them? Like, what do you usually do to stay sane? One advice that I can give is find an app that really works for you. For us, it was Discord because we found that we could create different 
channels within you know our server and it would really keep us organized we have one for our main chat we have one where we keep all the receivables and what to receive our inquiries are there and we also have proof of payment para we can see ko ano yung mga nabayaran na na work natin so it helps us keep track of all these different things it's made us you know, very productive in the long term. And one thing that also helps me aside from that is having a to-do list. I may, yes, it has helped me, Fofo. Uh, I may not be as, you know, great as you with a to-do list, but throughout the past couple of months, it has definitely helped me be on my toes about things. It's definitely helped me remember. Now, when we talk about something or if we have a meeting and I need to remember something, now I'm like, I have to list this down because I know that I'm going to forget. And that's my personality. I'm very forgetful. So, kailangan isulat ko agad siya. One short piece of advice that I can share that helped me. And if it helps you guys, then great. But one thing that helped me is that I needed to understand the tools that I have. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is you have a smartphone. 90% of Filipinos have smartphones from data, supposedly. But it's a high percentage, so don't quote me on that. Um, use that. And it's something that's so powerful if you take the time to learn it a bit more. So here's an example. With Discord, I didn't know that you could have separate channels and separate multiple pin posts. And it's these small features that really help me uh, organize myself. So imagine, let's say you're in a group, even just with your family, and your mom says, oh, Mick, can you make sure you send this back home? And then your brother tells you, oh, Mick, uh, don't forget, um, you have to ask me for this next Mm-mm. week. Mm-mm. So to remind myself, I realized that I could pin some posts. And most people don't know that, but... Apparently, it's a feature that's present in a lot of messaging yeah, apps. Yeah. So if you just took the time to get to know these things or how to be a more power user of these apps, mm-hmm. it will really help. And I know people always say it's daunting and scary to learn about tech, but really there are so many resources out there on YouTube, on blogs, on, on different various websites that can help you along and make the transition easier. And you might be... There might be a transition period of a couple of days, but after that, you have your whole lives of more convenience. And if you're really just not getting it or you feel like I'm not techie enough, bullet Ask. bullet journaling is all, also an yeah. option. It's something that I used to do. And I know some people have this thing where if they write it down, they'll remember it more. Diba? Like in school, like if you write down notes, you'll tend to retain that information longer. So if that works for you, then having a notebook with all the like to-do things that you need, cross them out when you're done with it, and then move on. Yeah. Or me, I always say, I always recommend digital because you can schedule reminders. Like Bonizi yeah. has permanent notifications. When a notification comes out, it doesn't hide itself. Yeah. Because if I if I have that thing na nakahide siya, I'm going to forget it. Like, yeah. Hindi ko siya mapapansin. Useless and yung pagka notify kay Bones. So yeah. yung kay Bones, she has to actively click on it and swipe it out. Mm-hmm. Just those small tips that kind of help each other depending on, you know, ano yung pagkukulang natin in terms of organization. Honestly, notifications became like an alarm for me. And I say this in the sense na, you know when you set an alarm and then you click snooze, notifications came like that for me. And it became a bad habit that I would just swipe it up and not even look at it. So, kailangan permanent notifications talaga sa akin. Alright, next up. Uh, wow, we've had so many discussions already and We're only it's at- only at 10 a.m. Yeah. Uh, move on na tayo sa 11 a.m. It's the Zoom meetings. Okay. So we usually schedule things at 11 at the earliest. It's our favorite time to schedule Zoom meetings. Did you realize? Almost always when he asks, oh, when would you like to Zoom meet? And we're like 11. <laughs> so why is that? What happened there? I guess because, you know, we, we tend to have like a routine in the morning and it helps wire us in a way you know how like people say like you do things for like your well-being and like your thought process for us it's really getting in a cup of coffee and playing some games in the day but i may energy kami, so it's kind of like our battery life for the day well for me i i just thought that 
Um, I like scheduling the Zoom meetings at 11 a.m. because it kind of gets it out of the way right away. And yeah. for me, the reason why I didn't pick 9 or 10 is 9 just seems a bit too early. Parang people aren't ready to meet at 9. Parang yet. people are still like getting in the groove of work for yeah, the day. Yeah, and the same goes for 10 a.m. So 11 a.m. seems like you're getting into the first meeting when everybody is still fresh. Mm-hmm. Parang the afternoons, baka pagod na sila, yeah. baka dere dere na yung Zoom meeting, so iba na yung freshness aura ng mga iba tao. Iba na yung vibe ng mga tao. So that, I, I, I guess that's why subconsciously we pick 11, or I pick 11 at least, yeah. and I'm happy with it. Um, but Bonizi, speaking about Zoom meetings, this new phenomenon of like Zoom being such a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody does Zoom nowadays. They do Zoom yoga. They do Zoom therapy, Zoom meetings, business meetings, uh, e Numans, everything. Yeah, everything yeah. is online already. And a new problem came up out of this, which is Zoom fatigue. Ah, yes. Diba? I heard about this. We've heard of stories, and I know I'm one million percent sure some of you have gone through 10 hours straight of Zoom meetings. Mm-hmm. And they're like, mas nakakapagod and work from home because of this particular aspect Now there's no breaks in between yeah yeah unlike before when you go from place to place meeting to meeting you have that break in between so that breather yeah can you imagine like the kids that are studying from home and doing school from online Batang bata pa lang. Like Alvaro. Batang bata pa lang may Zoom fatigue na. May Zoom fatigue na. Like Alvaro is what? Six years old and he's experiencing Zoom fatigue already. My friend's son, nakita ko nag-post siya ng picture. Naka-uniform siya. Pero yung nanay nakabantay din. So the kid has Zoom fatigue. But also for the kids that are, you know, studying from home, yung parents, they're not able to work or nakatutok as much sa work nila because they also have to make bantay their kids that are studying from home. So, Bonizi, um, what was your worst uh, Zoom stretch in a day? Like, how many Zooms did you have and how many hours did that take? I think we had... And how did you feel after that? Okay, I think we had five meetings that day. Not so so intense from the other people, I guess. But it was pretty intense for us. One, I felt so anxious that day because... We were doing so many meetings, presenting to like different people, different brands. And second was, I wasn't used to talking to people about presenting myself, about presenting what I could offer as an artist to the brands. So parang I felt anxious because I didn't know if I was going to say the right thing. I didn't know. Parang I was afraid that they wouldn't like me. Because yeah. ang kas- nakasanayan natin was yung management lang yung present or like the brands would come to our management. But this was such a new thing for us. And I was like, Fofo, I don't even know if I'm saying the right thing. Like, what if I don't look professional enough? So that those were the worries that I had also. Which I think we can equate to people being anxious in any business meeting because you want to be able to perform. So in the back of your head, you have to be on your A-game mm-hmm. and that adds extra effort and drains more energy from you. So I understand. And I remember, I think I remember that was also possibly my longest a uh, stretch of dere dere chung zoom parang five straight meetings and i remember we forgot to eat yeah uh, you forget to stretch and stand up so after you that forget you to just drink feel water. weird you feel physically weird and drained um how do you avoid this like how have we avoided this now we've been able to set meetings enough apart yeah. for us to be able to have that break time. Like if we have a meeting at 11, we make sure that our next meeting is at 1.30. So that after our 11 o'clock meeting, we have lunch time we, so that we don't forget to eat yeah. like before. We don't get as tired as much. And we always have water beside us for when we have our meetings because staying hydrated is also something that in the beginning we forgot to do and we'd end up like I got like a singao because I forgot to like drink water like super nagda dry yung skin ko so I mean just like small things that go a long way are like things that we can do to ano to like help us with that fatigue yeah and I guess one b- b- before we move on to the next hour of our day one thing with zoom meetings is I guess being able to be more efficient with communicating. Yeah. So 
there have been times when I feel like I talk too much and like don't go direct to the point. And one thing that Mikael always said is it's best to be transparent and it's best to be straightforward. You can always say it in a nice way, in a lumbing way, but don't like go around like all these corners trying to say all these stories because even you, when you're at a meeting and somebody's like going like this, Go in like you're like. Zigzag. Can you get to the point, please? Yeah. So definitely go straight to the point because you want to make sure now you're not wasting anybody's time. Yeah. Just a quick example. I promise we're gonna move on from this topic already. It's just such a rich topic. I realized. Mm-hmm. Um, Bonizi and I, when we were looking for that balance of being transparent and straight to the point, but at the same time not f- sounding too pushy or yeah, or, you know, too serious. Uh, I think there was one time the Zoom opened up and Bonizi says, okay, this is our work. And I'm like, what? She completely forgot to say hi. Do you remember this? You yeah. had this one thing. Yeah, I forgot to say hi. I forgot to she make forgot to say hi. She forgot to say, hey, I hope you guys are, uh, are doing okay. Thank you for your time. She just goes, the Zoom meeting opens up and she's like, this is our work right now. I'm like, whoa, my God. I and felt so wala na embarrassed. Pam- Wala na kung pambawi kasi pumasok na siya. Eh. Yeah, nagdere-derecho na tuloy yung meeting. And then, like, somewhere in between, Mikael was like, Sorry, we forgot to say hello na excited yata si Megan. <laughs> <laughs> but it was okay. But then, then, my last example is that uh, there was one person who we met. I can't name them, of course. But she was just the perfect balance. You remember this? N. Yes. Okay, see, N. Okay, and she was just so amazing. Yes. We said, hi, how are you? Good morning. And right after that, after like a 15-second greeting for one another, she goes, okay, thank you for your time. Uh, this is what I hope to discuss. And it was just so fluid. It took like 15 minutes. Yeah. And we got all our work done, and we were like, oh, this is like the holy grail of Zoom meetings. And she and she asked us all the questions that needed to be asked, like all the transparency questions. We got to ask questions also because we felt like, oh, wow, this is such like an open, you know, conversation. Like, walang ilangan, you know, walang nagmamataas dito sa meeting na to. So everything was like well-balanced and straight to the point and it was the perfect meeting. Zoom chemistry is a thing. I saw an article that said that amongst all like the communication apps or messaging apps, Zoom actually eats the most data out of everything. That's so interesting. Okay, you know what? Because of the way we've been going around this topic, we're going to come up with a Zoom podcast. I think we should. Let's talk about it. Like, Or like a communication, digital Commun- communications yeah. topic. Okay, digital communications topic. Got it. I like that. I like that. But anyway, let's move on. So after 11 a.m., you have lunch. Do we have lunch? Sometimes we don't because we forget. And we have like a late lunch. Like I would say our lunch is like 3 p.m. Okay, I have a reason for that. I don't know about you, but for me, I fast. So after, um, after having my breakfast in the morning around 9, 10, I, I, I consciously and intentionally do not eat until late afternoon. Kaya pala binibig- I always forget that you fast. I was eating lasagna. Somebody gave me lasagna. I was like, Fofo, do you want? He's like, no. Or like, I'll just have a bite. I was like, oh, it's lunchtime. Why aren't you eating in my head? And I just realized, oh, pala, nagpa-fast ka. Yeah, because uh, I try to stay, we try, we try to stay healthy. We, we are getting older. Met- metabolism is slowing down to a crawl. Especially you're two years older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're Caucasian, so you might hey, age faster. Hey, don't, don't discriminate. <laughs> don't discriminate. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, when it comes to metabolism, I, we've both noticed that it's slowed down. So we try to be more conscious and use the various diet t- tips and techniques out there so i fast and try to eat later during the day just so that i don't overeat it just it helps it helps yeah. and i've gotten used to it so i usually end up with my next meal being around 4 p.m yeah sometimes sasabayan ko si fofo because i also forget na he's fasting but if i have yummy food that's out there or like food that my friends send then i'm a dig in okay so after lunch what happened so I realized when I think of 12 to 3 p.m., what are we usually doing? On a weekday, we're either editing or like shooting content because gotcha. like there are times when we have like one brand and we have like like 
10 postings. What we try to do is we try to shoot everything in one day para tapos na. If not, we'll do half para we can do more than one brand for the day. Um, it's either that or I guess since you just mentioned that we have time, if we're not doing anything, then we can stream on one of those days. True, true. Diba? Actually, yeah, I realized. Um, I guess after lunch is our content production time. Yeah, we like do right a lot now of we're shooting production. at three p.m. on a weekday. On a weekday. Yeah, and then earlier I was editing an IGTV that um, I need to post or that I need to send for posting. So for approval, payan. So I have to work on that also. Or sometimes office work does carry over. I'd say office work sometimes would be one and a half hours to four hours. There are times when office work takes up four or five hours, no? There are times also when the whole the whole day we're just having meetings. Yeah. Back and forth. Office work would mean paying for the bills mm -hmm. and doing miscellaneous admin work for the household as well, paying for salaries. So all of that takes time. I mean, let's say it takes five minutes to pay for the salaries on your phone and then record it, and then five min another couple of minutes to pay for your various bills and mm -hmm. then double check. And then there are just so many little things that add up. So all right. Then we have at 6 p.m. or like 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Gotcha. So this is a time when we have open time to like have dinner, you know, do a do a workout, decompress. Decompress, that's important. So the way that I decompress is I'll either go to the room and just like be on my phone and just like scroll mindlessly through like TikTok or Instagram or I'll be on the couch with Sobo or probably take a nap because I think, you know, recharging for before a workout or before we like do a live stream is also really important. Ang sarap matulala. Yeah. After yeah, endless yan. Zoom meetings, after focusing on work, on editing, on thinking about future concepts to do, it's so nice to just sit down on a chair and tulala ka lang. You know, sometimes I won't even hold my phone. I'll just like put it aside and I'll just lie down and just be with Soba. Yeah. I think this is something that we do and if it's something that does help you i highly suggest that you keep doing it because i think it's important that after you know being so active mentally or physically you take time to like 15 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. just, really like just sitting down and just like yeah let everything seep out para sumingaw lang lahat ng pressure and stress kahit papano of course it doesn't fully do that but it helps and it helps a lot and it's something that really has helped me as well. I do it in different ways. Sometimes I make another cup of coffee. Sometimes I eat a snack, a presto, some cookies. And then I just sit down here and I'm just like, yeah, looking at my phone, looking at my games, not even playing the game. I'm just looking at it run. I'm like, yeah. I like cool. having time away from the screen. That really helps me relax. I mean, I love games, yes. Um, but since office work has become a big part of our daily routine being away from like sound even just music even music like i stay away from it sometimes also like i just want silence and it's helped me relax in so many different ways that i didn't even realize i needed so even time away from fofo i'm not saying that you're stressful but sometimes we need to be apart just to like relax. Kasi baka mamaya pag magkasama tayo, nagtatawanan na naman tayo, di ba? So, ayan. So, baka mamaya hindi tayo makapag-relax. <laughs> Being with one another uh, requires energy. Yes, it and does. And sometimes, even that, you don't want to expend energy yeah. for. And yeah. that is okay. Give me your hand, boy. <laughs> <laughs> boy. Give me boy. your hand, boy. Okay, after that, after, uh, after being tulala, I think the next thing that I, I personally do is I work out. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I'm able to kind of like uh, mentally check out for a little bit, recharge and decompress, that's when I'm a bit more ready to exert physical effort. Yes. So that's the time that I work out. I usually work out for around 45 to uh, 75 minutes. Mm -hmm. I have not been working out. <laughs> Let's let's just be so honest. So what do here. you do? I don't realize while I'm working out, what what's happening with you? Actually, sometimes I'm still working on some things. Gotcha, gotcha. So I, sometimes I will go back to like doing work because speaking of backlog, I actually do have a lot of backlog, and I try to like erase it, and I try to like just continue 
doing what I need to do. So do you erase it or make it ipon? Um, I try to finish it so okay. it gets erased. Sorry, I try to erase it from my to do list para ano na done na. Um, or I'll be setting up na for QMK if it's a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. Yeah. So after the workout. Uh, around 7 p.m. for Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we start setting up for our regular game show on Kumu mm-hmm. called Quizmoho. Yeah. Uh, that starts at 9 p.m., but we try to set up at 7 p.m. so we can get all the technical tests and rehearsals out of the way. But we're still able to do, like, usually at 7 p.m., I'm still finishing my workout. And then after that, I take a shower and get some dinner. And at 9 p.m. or around 8.30 p.m., we test the stream, I make sure w- everything is up and running. What's been happening is that you've been working out at 6 p.m. I'm like working on stuff and setting up for Kumu. And then by 7 p.m., I start working out, well, now, like for the past couple of days. And you're the one that works on Kumu. Yeah. So we take turns. And then mm-hmm. by 8 p.m., ready na tayo for sound check, video check. Oh my God, that's a full day. It is a full day. And by 9 p.m., we're already live on Quizmoho. For those that don't have Kumu, download the Kumu app and join us every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 p.m. for Quizmoho. Yeah, and we came up with a post-game show stream as well. So 9, 9 to 9.45 is our game show. And 9.45 to around 10, 10, 10.05 yeah. is a, a QMK study group where we talk about and assess the game show because it's fun that way. Yeah, we just like, I know, we like talking about the questions questions and <laughs> laughing yeah, about like, the mistakes that we'd made on the show. Dissecting what could have been done better. Being, uh, uh, be, being uh, uh, analyzing. We're, analyzing we're the analyzing game show. our own. We st- are Stephen A. Smiths of ourselves. We are our own criticizers. Tama ba yun? Critics. Critics. <laughs> criticizers. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Analyzers and Analyzer. criticizers. <laughs> 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 These are the two terms of Bonizi. <laughs> Okay, and with that, after we set down, so we set up, and then of course after QMK we set down, we relax. San yung sh- baka iniisip nila, san kaya sila, anong oras kaya sila naliligo sa araw na yan? I know, we said it naman eh, before, in between like 7 ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 9 p.m. we yeah. take a shower. But there, and after the set down, there you have it. That is a full day. A full day in the new normal with Bones and Fofo. So as you can see and as you can hear, there are still a lot of things to do. So much. And somewhere in between all those hours, we have to be able to shoot uh, vlogs. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to shoot extra work. And we still need to go out for errands from time to time, especially now that GCQ is is implemented. Um... But yeah, I think time management has become so important for Bonizi and I because we are a bit more independent nowadays. Yeah. Uh, we are more in control. So now I really get to relate to entrepreneurs out there, to freelancers. Um, and it's just nice being able to share this because I know that other people are also going through this. Ang kapo artista natin. Yeah. People who are suddenly who suddenly graduated and maybe are trying to do their own thing. Or people, people who that have shifted started industries and sh- yeah, shifted jobs. So I like talking about this. How did you feel about it? It's interesting because I didn't think that we would be doing this. Like I just thought, like at the back of my head, okay, we're taping lang kami and then like, yeah, Instagram, like pa post post lang tayo. But we've actually shifted into making it a whole business for us. Yeah, and my question for all the viewers is please answer down in the comment section what tips, tricks, or experiences do you guys have to share from this new normal? Because all of a sudden, I didn't realize we had this much to share about. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a super quick podcast of us going through the day, making cuento, pero ang dami pala natin experiences that we had never experienced prior to mm-hmm. this year. We talked about our whole day. There are always ups and downs, but let's do a loaded question. Okay, again, one loaded okay. question for the viewers. All right, guys, this is the loaded question of the week. Din, 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 din. The loaded question of the week is, what is the hardest part of the quarantine? Wow. Okay, this is a difficult question for me to ask because I'm such an optimist. 
Okay. So I don't really, I don't necessarily look at the hardest part. I look at opportunities to take advantage of. Okay. So even though I think the whole transition was relatively difficult, mm -hmm. I accepted the challenge and I welcomed it and I enjoyed the process. Even though, marami tayong pagkakamali. Minsan, mm -hmm. nag-iipon tayo ng backlog. <laughs> but what's this called? Kahit nadada pa tayo, I enjoy knowing that, okay, you know what, we're gonna make this mistake, but we're gonna be able to learn from this mistake. Yeah. And let's grow from that. And I get excited for the next opportunity that I can avoid making that mistake. So that's that's just me. But if I try to think about it a bit harder, I think that the hardest part of quarantine for us was being able to give our life structure which we never really had to do. GMA yeah. would be the ones to set the taping schedules. Yeah. They would set all the logistics for taping. Uh, same with events that we would have and photo shoots. But now we had free reign and complete autonomy over our lives. Yeah. That we had to be accountable for ourselves. If we didn't want to set a schedule and if we didn't want to put more organization, we didn't have to. But then we would feel that. Yeah, yeah, I guess. We would not be very efficient and productive. Yeah, for me, the hardest part was definitely figuring out what the next step was. Like, What do you no, mean? Like, What do you mean? Like, Shepard, we didn't have taping, so a lot of things were uncertain for us because, of course, we couldn't do taping for the safety of everybody else. Diba? There are so many people on the set, and we would be following what are the protocols. But... Since we didn't have that and we didn't know kung kailan may ibabalik yon, early on, it was hard figuring out which direction are we going to go. Or aside from that, how are we going to earn money was also something that we had to think of. Because even though we did have taping and we do have contracts, for us, we had to think, shucks, no work, no pay tayo. Yeah. So, Paano tayo kikita ng pera na nagwo work tayo, di ba? Like from the comforts of our own homes. So I think trying to like find that and find out which direction we were gonna go was definitely the hardest part. And if we didn't work on it, or if we didn't like do a deep dive into <laughs> that area, baka wala tayong podcast ng tuloy tuloy, or baka wala tayong ginagawa. So we took a risk, and it was definitely hard taking that risk. I like what you said. I really do. Uh, I think um, I can take this full circle. Meaning, right now, I think it's safe to say that this podcast is something that has flourished. Yeah. I would consider it a success. I mean, it's something that we really did not have as much focus on prior to the pandemic. Yeah, we did it for fun, honestly. And we did it when we had free time. But now we see it as something very long term. I, we talked about this. We want to do this for the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, we want it to evolve into uh, behind family goals instead of just behind mm -hmm. relationship goals. But I guess my question relating to your experience is when we started this podcast again, when we decided we were going to commit to this, did you know it was going to turn out this way? Were you confident or was there fear that, oh my God, we might not be able to pull this off? I think it was more of, I didn't see the bigger picture. I just saw it like, yeah, podcast, yeah, it's something we'll do for fun. Oh, whatever, really? whatever. Like even during the pandemic? No, when we first started, like two years ago, when, okay, we, well, when we started well, it. Well, what about like during the pandemic when we transitioned? Into when we did our transition, then I had to shift my perspective because I had to look at what we had in a different light. I had to look at our online content in a different light. Let's say, for example, the way that I would tackle Instagram. Before, I'd just be like, whatever, whatever. But now, especially when working with brands, I take a lot of love and time into like curating something for the brands because you know they take a lot of time and effort into making these decks to make sure that the content that we give them is great. So even for the podcast, before I would just look at it as you know, a slice of life that we can share with people. But now I try to look at it in a business perspective. It's a product that we're able to offer. Ooh. How can we give more value to this product to the consumers? Bang, that's how I look at the podcast now in a business 
perspective. What's something that I can- didn't know that you're so mature. Wow, I'm gonna walk out and leave the podcast to you now. Na, na in love ka na naman sa akin, no? No, no, no. I was like, sige, si Bones na bahala sa podcast mag-games. Na no, no, no. I'm kidding, kasi, I'm kidding. Kasi, you know, like whenever we see comments, honestly, it really super duper warms our hearts and we're super thankful that, you know, people actually take the time to listen to like the fun quirky things that we have to say and you guys actually take interest so we want to be able to give something more valuable to you guys in the long run and something that you guys can appreciate as well from us so i guess it's a give and take kind of situation rather than just giving and giving or just taking and taking i want everything that we put out to be more of a give and take and with that revelation of uber maturity from madame bonizi (laughs) This podcast has come to an end. Thanks, guys, for listening to the podcast. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, put it in the comment section, please. We love listening or hearing from you guys. Listening talaga. May voice note ba to? One thing that I noticed on Anchor pala, you guys can subscribe to us. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, I have to check that out. Yes. Oh, one question that I have. Would you guys be game to subscriptions for the podcast? I don't know. It's just something out there. Like, would you be game for like stickers that only subscribers can use just like on Facebook? I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And don't forget to like the podcast and subscribe because that's something we always forget. Please subscribe to the podcast, guys. Yep. And with that, this is Hashtag Behind Relationship Goals. I am Fofo. And I'm Bones. Bye. Bye.